I thought it would never happen to me, but I guess it finally did and I got deactivated by Lyft. The reason I'm feeling frustrated over this is because of how easy it is for Lyft to deactivate me without providing me with a reason why. And while I don't know the specifics of what led to the deactivation yet, here's everything that's led up to that moment and hopefully it'll paint a picture of what potential reasons it could have been, which we'll get into at the end. So the most viewed video on my channel is currently how I made $860 during the pandemic. And that was just in one day. And sure, it was a lot easier at the time. Lyft was just handing out free money to drivers. And that's because one, my market shut down at times where others were still locked up, which caused an influx of visitors to come into the city to do whatever vacations they had planned before COVID. And then two, a lot of people who were forced to work from home could now travel to cheaper cities instead of staying in locked up states like New York and California. So this led to a larger population, which leads to more rides for drivers. Three, people were getting married still. Despite the fact that COVID existed, people still wanted to get married and they wanted to do so without the attendance restrictions they would have had in various states. So a lot of them started piling into Charleston, which really helped the driver scene. But the biggest reason of all was that because of the PPP loans, the unemployment checks and the stimulus money, drivers weren't driving as much because they didn't have to. They could stay home, collect money without going out and risking their health throughout the pandemic. So with all those factors put together, you can understand why it was easy for me to make $860 a day. And because of all of that, that made Lyft give out $350 for weekly bonuses every single week. So I was able to make $500 in one day. And then on that specific day, I got my $350 bonus. And in that video, and up until this point, even to this day, I've maintained that it's still possible to make $500 a day, even though the $860 was a fluke. But a lot of people disagreed with me. I've been getting a ton of comments about people saying that, oh, if I were to try that today during this driving climate, that I wouldn't be able to make that $500. So I decided to do what I do best, which was proving the haters wrong. So the day before I got activated, I decided to pull an 18 hour shift in one day. I started driving at 5 a.m. and then I drove till 6 p.m. And then I took a six hour break and started driving at after 12 o'clock midnight up until 5 a.m. for a total of 18 hours. That's the most you can do on one platform. At the end of it, I immediately beeline to my bed and then I... What? Of course I'm gonna tell them whether or not I actually hit the $500 in those 18 hours. No, I'm not gonna do it in this video. This video is not about that. If they wanna see that video, then they can subscribe and hit the notification bell so they don't miss it. Anyways, when I woke up the next morning, I got an email from Lyft saying that I was deactivated. And to show you why I'm so concerned and disappointed over this, we're going to walk through that email together. I'm gonna to read it to you and I'm gonna tell you how it makes me feel inside so that we can see how unfair Lyft is towards their drivers. Hi Tristan, Lyft is investigating a potential violation of our community guidelines in terms of service involving your account. In line with these policies, I've placed your driver account on hold while we investigate. During this time, you'll be unable to drive on the Lyft platform. I've included some important information for you to review below. Here's what you can expect. A member from our trust and safety team will be reaching out to you. They will utilize either the phone number or email address linked to your account. Trust and safety is the dedicated team who will review the details associated with your deactivation and stay in touch with you throughout the investigation process. For privacy reasons, team members at the hub or local office cannot assist with the activation reviews or this nature and will not be able to escalate, expedite, or provide information on your behalf. That's where my stomach started turning. This is, at this moment, my livelihood, right? And it's probably the livelihood of many other drivers out there. And they're making it impossible for me to follow up, check in, or deal with the situation in person, which would probably net a faster result. If this is something so important, they need to have their offices able to handle this. I shouldn't, uh, it's been four days and I still don't know why I'm deactivated. That's absurd. Our safety team will contact you as soon as they possibly can. Please know that calling our support line will not escalate or expedite a review of this incident. We understand it's important to be timely and appreciate your patience while we ensure this matter is fully investigated. So they're just doubling down on their previous point that there's nothing you can do until we are ready to reach out to you. And despite the fact that we've reached out to you because of this complaint, we're not gonna tell you what the complaint is. We're going to wait, which for me is problematic. So when I got home at 5 a.m., I went, I woke up at 10 a.m., and I had a flight at 2 p.m. to be in Vegas for a week's long vacation. 
So if they even had called me that day, which they didn't, the potential of them speaking to me would have been very slim as I was traveling, I had layovers, and I was just not in my home environment to take care of this issue. And because this happens right before I'm on vacation, I don't know why it's happening, I became very conscious of my spending, right? I wasn't gonna cancel the vacation because I'm actually out here to look for areas to live because this is a tax-free state and I'm trying to improve my finances. So it's not like I'm just here for vacation, but it would have been nice to be able to go around, spend money, to enjoy the time a little more, to know if this is somewhere I want to be. But I had all of that erased because of the uncertainty. The uncertainty of whether or not by the time I come back home that I'll have my normal way of making money. And so that's a huge problem. I can't imagine people who might have large families dealing with this issue where Lyft is their primary income. Like, what do you do in that scenario, Lyft? We have to improve this process. But we'll talk more about that at the end of this video. How long will the investigation take? As soon as a specialist has been assigned to this incident, you will be contacted by either phone or email. Most investigations can be resolved quickly. However, our priority is the safety of the community. We're not the community. They're not interested in the safety of us. They are interested in the safety of the community, which is the rider. Keep that in mind. The safety team carefully gathers all necessary information and follows strict guidelines to ensure fairness and consistency. So lack of fairness here is I'm assuming someone reported me for something and I'm gonna assume it's a false claim. Someone was trying to get a ride. That's just what my assumption is. And I, I have potential people who I think it might be based off of the interactions we've had, but it's not fair for them to be able to submit a claim you have that claim and not tell us what that claim is. Like I'm, I'm on pins and needles out here in a different state because I don't know what's going on. They do say that I can contact them if I think I have something that will expedite the problem. But the problem with that whole statement is I don't know what the problem is, right? So let's say this was a legitimate thing that happened. If a driver got into it with a customer, the driver would have a pretty clear idea about which ride it is and would be able to do some rebuttals. But if it's a false accusation, and I can't pinpoint what the issue is, how the hell am I supposed to give you information to expedite this problem? I can't. I need you guys to tell me what was said about me so that I can defend myself faster. This needs to be within this, like a few hours before I get deactivated or at the moment of deactivation. You shouldn't be deactivating people without telling them why they are being deactivated specifically. We know you have that information, otherwise you wouldn't deactivate the person. And my response to them was that, look, I have a dash cam and I record everything, and I don't always store everything. So it would have been problematic if something happened, I didn't store it, it would have been problematic if I didn't have a dash cam. Dash cams are not cheap and they're not required. So if you're gonna put people in situations where they have to prove what they did or didn't do with video, communicate that that would help with the process or make it easier to get these things, then this is a terrible process. If I didn't have dash cam, I would be feeling a lot worse right now in my stomach because even if I knew I didn't do anything, and I got a false accusation, how am I gonna prove it? I wouldn't be able to. That's why the first thing I let them know that I had was a dash cam so that we can resolve this as quickly as possible. Hopefully it would motivate them to give me the information faster so that I can find it. But the problem I was facing personally is that even though I took the dash cam footage out and I stored it on my computer, I'm not at my computer. I'm in Vegas. I'm thousands of miles away from home. Thankfully, I have great friends and I have a lock on my door that has a code on it. One of my friends was able to go into my house, upload all of the footage up into Google Drive. That took 18 hours. That's all I have, that's all I know. That, that I'm stuck, I'm stuck right here. And while they haven't reached out to me yet, as soon as they do, as soon as this issue gets resolved, when I get kicked off the platform and I need to go do something else, I'm going to let you guys know. I will also be letting you guys know how much money I made in those 18 hours that I drove leading up to the deactivation. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you turn the notification bell on, make sure you're being safe, and make sure you go out and get a dash can because this is peace.